In Matthew's story, there are also some echoes of the story of Moses. That's the way people wrote scripture, midrashic, they called it. They thought nothing about wrapping the stories of one holy person around the stories of another holy person. So only in Matthew do you have the story of a wicked king named Herod who goes down to Bethlehem to kill all the boy babies to try to get rid of this promised deliverer. And every Jewish person hearing that story would recognize that as a Moses story. Remember the wicked king named Pharaoh who tried to kill all the Jewish boy babies in Egypt. In Matthew's story, Joseph also flees from the wrath of Pharaoh with Mary and the Christ child down to Egypt so that God could call Jesus out of Egypt and replicate the story of Israel. Matthew is also the first gospel writer to introduce the character of Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, into the text. I do not think his choice of the name Joseph was an accident. And the reason we suggest that the name of Joseph was not because that was the name of the earthly father of Jesus, but because that's the way Matthew was interpreting Jesus. He was interpreting him after the analogy of the Joseph of the book of Genesis. And how do we know that? Well, look at what we learn in Matthew's gospel about Joseph. And that's the only place we get biographical data about Joseph. Matthew says that Joseph had a father named Jacob. Matthew says that the role that Joseph played in salvation history was to save the child from death by taking him down to Egypt. And Matthew says that God never spoke to Joseph except in a dream. Now go back to the story of the patriarch Joseph in chapters 37 to 50 of the book of Genesis. And there you will learn three things about Joseph. One is he had a father named Jacob. Two is he was overwhelmingly identified with dreams. <clears throat> he was the interpreter of dreams, the Pharaoh's dream, the butler's dream, the baker's dream. He was called the dreamer. And three, that, Jacob, that Joseph's role in salvation history was to save the people of the covenant from death, death by starvation. And how did he save them? By taking them down into Egypt, where ultimately they fell into slavery. Because a Pharaoh arose who knew not Joseph. So we need to listen to those details and see this author of Matthew's gospel weaving an interpretive message that he clearly did not mean to be taken literally. Literally. 